Hey, this is Matt O'Leary, and this is a review of the second album, Skip Tracing, from Alex Breton, the spry and ambitious leader of this rotating cast of young hopefuls, Mild High Club. This band has their aesthetic down to a T. You know, it's that Mac DeMarco or Ariel Pink style of West Coast psych pop, a little bit sleazy and a little bit sensual, but also very technically speaking, when it comes to the music, very schooled and seasoned. I thought Mild High Club's first one was good, but it stuck a little bit too close to the Slacker brand. They didn't really do anything to differentiate themselves for me. And don't get me wrong, I really did, after repeated listens, grow to really appreciate Timeline, the first album, which was partly inspired by the Facebook timeline. It did a great job at exploring just the oddity of our generation, that we create and manage these virtual and curated personas, and, and they almost come to represent us more so even than our actual experience or personality. And the music itself was all about these lengthy piano progressions, definitely the product of knowledgeable and well-versed jazz players. On Skip Tracing, they definitely continued this trend with just more flair and more flourishes overall, but also a lot cleaner transitions and flow throughout the album from start to finish. A lot of these songs run just right into the next. And the chord structures, again, are right at the heart of this music. Those unforeseen chromatic movements are really everything for these guys, especially on tracks like Carry Me Back or the lead single Homage. They're really not a riff band, which is interesting because they toured with King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard last year, who are really the kings of those cyclical and brain melting guitar riffs. And Homage, that song, is so catchy, I just can't seem to get that chord chorus out of my head. It's got these tumbling synths and this James Jamerson-esque almost uh, muted bass line that's just terrific. I love those rising tones of guitars or synths or whatever they are at the end of the choruses that really do a great job of building tension before it just drops off back into the chill verse. The huge Steely Dan influence comes in on the jazz pop of that fourth track, Tessellation, and the production value seems to be up to that same standard of Steely Dan, really just a fastidious level. The drums and snare sounds are just so crispy, and that sleek guitar line and funk wah-wah sounds they're just polished and really satisfying. The next couple tracks have that loungy jazz feel that the front cover really portrays pretty well. Coco Pelli's got that sleepy slither to it and really the lyrical highlight for me which is tunage beats suffering. <laughs> <laughs> And apparently a skip tracer, which I had to look up because I didn't know what that was, is um, a, a person who investigates missing people. I'm not sure if I quite caught on to the lyrical themes as much in this one as I did on Timeline, uh, but, but then again, I never actually read the lyrics, and, and his mid-range sort of slur can be really hard to pick up at times. My major complaint with this record has to do with the length of it and, and just the pacing, which really just completely falls off around the song Head Out. I like the percussive experimentation that's thrown in on the song Who Done It, but I start to lose interest, especially on Chasing My Tail, which is just so similar in tempo and melody to the previous tracks that I just sort of go into a lull. And I understand and, and stand by the emphasis on slow jams, but they made 30 minutes feel tedious, which is certainly a feat. I think a welcomed addition to this album are just all the people that sing on it and those lush choral arrangements on the transitional ceiling zero or the snappy closer Chapel Perilous. Some complex jazz chords and, and some spacey effects make these vocal arrangements really pop the same way that they would in a Bee Gees record. It's also very similar to the latest from Tame Impala Currents with that shuffling hi-hat and consistent cracking snare. And I think if Alex Breton has one thing on Mac DeMarco, it's really his jazz chops. I don't think that Mac has that sort of capability. On Skip Tracing, mild high club movement just a bit further away from just a little pleasant escape of an album and into something with more ambition and guts. I think with its short runtime, it's definitely worth checking out. In my opinion, Skip Tracing is, is a 6 out of 10. I think it could be improved a little bit with some more up-tempo tracks thrown into the middle of the album here and there. 
but it's one that I'll return to from time to time. Are you excited about Mild High Club? Do you think they're onto something with this record? Do you think this one falls too closely in line with a genre that's really saturated right now? In any case, thank you for watching. See you later.